This is a Pentair multiport pull valve. This is the Pentair multiport valve diverter when it's new. Notice the spring is in perfect condition. This is the same multiport valve diverter after a few years of use and the spring is completely rusted and disintegrated and needs to be replaced in order to work again. Most people end up spending a lot of money for the whole multiport diverter top assembly, which costs $150 if you're getting a good deal. I'm going to show you how to replace this spring for less than $5 and rebuild the whole multiport diverter top. You're going to need to use two clamps to compress the spring. This is with the old spring, it still helps to compress it down to be able to remove the pin. Using a sturdy screwdriver or a punch and a hammer, we're going to take the screwdriver and we're going to knock this pin out. It comes out pretty easily. Now remove this handle. And then there's the handle washer to remove and set aside. And now release the clamps. If this spring were a new spring, you'd want to be careful releasing the clamps because the spring can apply a lot of pressure, but this spring is old and rusted, so it's not good anymore. And now we can remove the top. Remove the old rusted spring. There's supposed to be a spring washer up here to protect this area from the spring, make it easier to turn. But this spring washer has long since deteriorated. It's gone. It's just, I saw a little remnant of plastic on there. Now we need to remove the old washers from the diverter and replace these while we're rebuilding this. The easiest way to do that is to push these out, pinch them a little bit like this, get them until there's enough space to put a flathead screwdriver under here, and then pull away and slide it up. Do the bottom one first. You want to be careful not to dig into the groove with the screwdriver because that can make scratches and cause a leak. Take these two parts and clean them off really well. Brush them until all the rust and stuff is removed. This is the genuine Pentair spring, but it is stupid expensive to replace. The cheapest I've seen this spring is about $35 and it sells anywhere up to $60. That's crazy for just one spring like this. This spring is the same one used for both the 1.5 inch and the two inch multiport valve. The dimensions of this spring are one and three eighths inch tall by one and five eighths inch in diameter. The wire diameter of the spring is 0.1875 inches. So I ended up finding a much less expensive replacement spring sold by Hayward for their valves and it's virtually identical to this spring except it's wound in the opposite direction but all the dimensions are the same the material is probably the same so this spring only costs about 12 to 13 dollars and i can even find multi-packs of this spring of four for 14 dollars that is crazy inexpensive now i don't know if the quality of these will last as long as the genuine product but for 12 to 13 dollars this is still cheap this is the Hayward spring on the right and the Pentair spring on the left. You can see that the height is the same, the diameter is the same, the number of coils is the same, and it's just wound in the opposite direction. And also, the wire diameter is the same. On the right is the El Cheapo Hayward spring, which is four for $14, and on the left is the genuine Hayward spring, and these look very similar also. The diameter is the same, the height is the same, the wire diameter is the same. So these should be fine. The only unknown is what is the material that the cheaper one uses and will it last as long as the genuine one. One place to make sure to clean really well is in this inner diameter right here. Use something to really scrub that out and make sure that's super clean and smooth. If this is rough in here, it can be sanded smooth with some very fine grit sandpaper and use a circular motion rather than an in and out motion so that the scratches go around the circumference and won't lead to any leaks. Once the cover and the diverter have been cleaned up and you've removed as much rust as possible, now it's time to take all of the replacement parts and reassemble everything. So the replacement parts that you should have are two new O-rings, the replacement spring, the spring washer if yours is degraded or missing, and the handle washer. If your spring washer and handle washer are still in good condition, you can reuse them. Use a little bit of silicone grease when replacing the O-rings. So we're going to squish a little bit of silicone grease into these grooves. Put the first O-ring back on.
rotate it in there and get that silicone grease all over the o-ring. Then put the second o-ring back on. And again, rotate it around in there and get that grease all over. Now take the spring and place the spring on the diverter shaft. Take the spring washer, place the spring washer on top of the spring. You may also want to replace this gasket in the top cover if that's leaking. Also make sure that this is well greased with silicone. Take this top cover, put it on top of the diverter. Now take the handle washer, put it on top here. And now we're gonna use some clamps to clamp this whole thing so we can put the handle back on. The clamps are gonna to need to be offset from the pinhole such that you can pass the pin through later. So. Just make sure the clamp is on the strong edge there and you don't have to tighten up too much to get it tight enough to be able to put the pin in. The handle will only go on in one direction. There's a little rib here. That's the front of the handle there. Then put the pin in. And in this case, the pin slid right in there. It didn't even need to use a punch. Okay, now carefully release the tension on these clamps. What I do is I pull the clamps, release the tension and release there. All right, the rebuild is complete. Works perfectly well. Now we just need to put the rebuilt diverter assembly back into the main valve body and make sure to align this notch here with this notch on the cover. That's the alignment. Put it back together there. You can lift this up to relieve the pressure as you're screwing everything in. Go ahead and replace all the screws and the nuts that go underneath.